Welcome back to 7 Moons Astrology. I'm Sarah Kirby and today we are talking about the best and worst energy in the month of January 2022 for your most important manifestations. This is a technique called electional astrology in which we choose the energy that is most supportive on the best days to increase the likelihood that whatever we're desiring, whatever the outcome of a situation that we're driving toward, um, it flows smoothly to us and has a, a greater chance of success and ease. So we can also avoid the dates that are most challenging. And this is really important because the moment that we initiate something important in our lives, there's a birth chart for that point in time. And that birth chart describes the lifetime of this project. So you're launching a course, you're selling a house, you're getting married, you're starting school, you're purchasing something important, you are doing anything that is in some way significant or meaningful to you. And if you do so when the energy is really intense and challenging, then the lifetime of that thing is wrought with challenge and intensity. But if you choose energy that flows smoothly and easily, then your chances for success are greater. And so that's what electional astrology is all about. And I've created a calendar with some of the best days and dates that you really should avoid for this month. And I wanted to talk to you about it specifically because we've got Mercury retrograde coming up this month. And of course, this is an infamous time in astrology where everybody is always saying, don't do anything, don't sign any contracts, don't buy a car, don't take any trips, don't try to, your business deals are going to fall through, blah, 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 blah. Yes, there is some merit to these statements, but a lot of times we don't have any choice, right? Timing has it such that we need to sign a contract during a Mercury retrograde. And I think there is a bit of unwarranted fear when it comes to these things. Plus, you know, a great deal of the population was born under Mercury re retrogrades. And so during that time, things actually flow a lot easier for those people. So I've chosen the best date during Mercury retrograde this month so that let's say you have no choice, you can know a time window that is best for you and kind of trust in the outcome a little bit more despite the fact that Mercury will be retrograde during that time. And then like I said, if you were born under the Mercury retrograde, this time is really golden for you for specific things. So I'm gonna pull up the calendar now. Okay, so this is the calendar for the month of January, and we're a little bit behind because as I'm recording this, this is the 6th, so um, we're going to focus on the latter part of the month once Mercury goes retrograde. And, and some important things to point out here and a little discussion about how I determine these things is based on the phases and the sign and the aspects of the moon on each date. So. Um, there's an important principle in astrology called the void of course moon. And this is the period of time in which the moon is about to change signs. So it's in a given sign for every two to three days. Let's say, for instance, it is in the sign of Taurus here, like for on the 10th, 11th, and 12th. On the 12th, it changes signs from Taurus to Gemini, which you can see here in the calendar. And in between that period, the moon will be what is known as void of course. It's done making aspects to other planets in the sign of Taurus. And things tend to fall quiet during this time. You can notice that uh, maybe you're a little bit tired. Um, things don't really, there's not as much energy to um, get things done, or it's just feeling a little bit more quiet and meditative. It's a good time for rest. It's a good time for you know, taking the day off early, it's a good time for meditation or yoga or just getting things done, wrapping up projects. Void of course moon is not a good time to initiate or start anything brand new. Anything that you do start under the void of course moon tends to just fall flat because the moon is no longer making aspects to any planets and the moon is really a source of manifestive energy in the sky. And so it sort of acts as an antenna or a beacon or a channel for the energy of the other planets to act through. And when it's not interacting with other planets, you just don't really have any energy to take what you are driving forward and lift it off. So 
That's the void of course moon. The last aspect that the moon makes to the final planet that it interacts with before it changes sign tells us a lot about the outcome of what we're initiating. So I'll tell you what I mean by that. The moon is in Taurus, let's say, on the 12th, and I'll give you an example here. And before it goes a void, of course, the last aspect that it makes is a trine to Pluto in Capricorn. Trines are positive, beautiful, beneficial energies, and they typically result in positive outcomes. So that energy, the moon trine Pluto, is a description of the outcome of whatever we initiate at that time. So Pluto, in the positive sense, the higher manifestations of Pluto, which we would expect to see through a trine to the moon, would be things like positive transformation, magnetism of what we desire most toward us, feeling really powerful, feeling really um, authentic and free to express uh, vulner vulnerably and intimately. It's a powerful energy for getting down to the truth of the matter and seeing things clearly with discernment. It's a great energy for business, things like that. So, so these dates here, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, while the moon is in Taurus, are marked by the energy of that trine to Pluto, and they're pretty beneficial. Now, I didn't really select these as the best dates, although I think that they are good if you have certain things in that Plutonian nature to initiate, especially if you're looking to do, do it in a long-term sense um, and with incremental progress, because that's what Taurus is all about. It's about a patient, steady, incremental change that drives us toward a more secure outcome. So, you know, I, I think that that's a great time, especially if you do this before about 1.40 p.m. Central Time on the 12th, because that's when that last aspect happens before the void of course moon. I wouldn't recommend that you use any of these dates after about, you know, let's say 1.30 in the afternoon Central Time on the 12th. So, of course, you've got to adjust that to your time zone. But that's just a, a little example of how this works and how I determine these things. Um, a lot of times people say that, you know, of course, you need to set your intentions on the new moon for the next lunar cycle, and that is super, super true. However, when you're talking about specific elections for um, taking action or initiating on something um, very specific and rooted in the real world, uh, the new moon is not always the best energy because that's when the moon is dark and it doesn't have um, a ton of energy behind what you are trying to do because the new moons are fundamentally about release and shedding and rest and renewal. So if you're trying to break ties with someone, do a breakup, if you're trying to um, fire someone, uh, let go of something, lose weight, clean out your house, sell a house, those are, you know, the new moon would be good for that too when you think about just um, phases. So each of these dates, it kind of depends on what you're looking to do. But the best date, the best date that I'm going to give you this month is actually the 19th after the sun has moved into Aquarius at 8.39 p.m. Central Time. So in the evening hours of the 19th before 2.15 in the morning, when the moon goes void, of course, that is just a golden time for the initiation of certain certain things. And I'm going to go over the chart specifically with you for this energy. So got to do something during Mercury retrograde. See if you can plan it for the 19th in the evening, because I think that that would be a really good time. And I'll show you why. So here's the chart for that time. And there's a lot of really great things. And right off the bat that you can see that there's two grand trines happening here, which are just an abundance of positive, beneficial energy. And this chart works really well for a lot of things that you might be interested in doing. So I'll, I'll explain this to you. Now, first off, the rising sign of this chart is Virgo. And that first house and the rising sign sort of represents um, what this project is. And it's the major themes of whatever action you're taking. This is what, it's the essence of what you're starting at this time. And so Virgo is a beautiful energy for um, whatever you're working on being really detail oriented it being very organized it's being very rational it's for the service of other people it's um, well thought out it's um, very clear and well explained 
It's ruled by Mer Mercury. So this is an air sign energy placed in Aquarius right now. And the reason why I like this so much is because I love that as the sun moves into Aquarius and Mercury is there, even though it's retrograde, so much of this energy is beautiful because it will be in the sixth house. The sixth house is Virgo's house. And so Mercury will work very well from there. And the ongoing Saturn Uranus square that has caused so many issues for us in the past during 2021 is something that I really wanted to mitigate during this time because that's that push and pull energy that makes us feel like we just want to change everything and we're restricted and there's too much responsibility and there's too much unpredictability. That we can mitigate through these trines here. Uranus makes a trine to Venus, which is one of the benefic planets. And so that is a stabilizing impact that really makes things more about what we value. It makes them more about pleasure and beauty. It enhances relationships. And although Venus is retrograde, I still think that this is a positive energy because it's also making a trine to the ascendant at that time. So it's involvement there. You know, if you have to choose something while these planets are retrograde, there really is no better date than this specific window of time, you know, about after 8.45 p.m. and until 2.15 in the morning. So the moon is also in a grand trine as well. And that is with um, Eris, which has been involved in a square with Pluto this past year as well. So that's another mitigating influence for some of the intensity that we've had in the skies recently. And the moon is also making a beautiful trine to Mars within two degrees. I love this because Mars can de definitely be a malefic influence, but while it's well-placed in a fire sign of Sagittarius and the moon is also in a fire sign Leo, this to me is all about really having a lot of ambition and drive and a sense of um, confidence in what we're doing. And it's authentic to us. And we're, we're really achievement oriented under this influence. So I think it's a positive thing. So the other thing to mention here, another reason why I like this chart is because the lunar phase is just past the full moon, right? So the moon is beginning to wane, but it's still very full in the sky. There's a lot of light in the moon, a lot of energy to take what we are initiating on the, at this time to its fullest potential, to grow it to the fullest point. So I really like that as well. The moon is in the 12th house, which is sometimes something that we wouldn't necessarily choose because the 12th house can can signify loss, it can signify endings. But the 12th house also represents things like spirituality and it represents the subconscious mind, it represents um, the, meta the metaphysical plane and working in retreats or hospitals, um, vacations. So this is a great date for planning a um, really specific trip, either for business or for leisure. It's a great energy for any kind of communication projects, especially if they are spiritual in nature or geared towards um, healing and, you know, maybe themes of the subconscious mind. If you're working on any projects related to that, I think that that's really good. And if there are any way artistic in nature, that's also positive because Leo is a very creative and artistic sign. I also like this energy for the North nodes having just moved into Taurus uh, in the ninth house of this chart because the ninth house represents higher education. It represents publishing, long distance travel, teaching. And so if what you're looking to initiate involves any of those things, um, that North node in the ninth house means that that's really the uh, direction of fate for this energy. So there's several reasons why I like this, but primarily because the Saturn Uranus square is so well mitigated in this chart. And um, really, I, I think it, it's got a lot of positive energy considering how challenging this time 
really could be. You've got Jupiter in its home sign of Pisces in the seventh house. That is representative of contracts, agreements, and negotiations. So that's a positive energy for those things as well. So I really like this for energy. Um, I really like this for projects that are specifically related to, you know, communication and writing or courses and learning. Um, Traveling is another one that I think it's beneficial for, but if you're looking to make deals with people, um, it's a good one as well. Um, selling things, all things considered, it's a good time. Now, what I will tell you about this is that what do you need to know if Mercury is actually retrograde? What is what is that going to mean? You know, this this is a good date, but it's still Mercury retrograde, and you've got Venus retrograde as well. The nodes just shift, and Uranus will have just station direct. So word of caution, you know, the energy is still intense here. Really what this means is that you're, you're probably going to have to do some revision. That's what Mercury retrograde is going to suggest. And the relationships that you make, being that Venus is still retrograde, might not uh, be what they seem to be at first. So that's something we can also kind of expect when Jupiter and Neptune are both in Pisces, because what it has, it, it, it makes us see things with rose-colored glasses. It makes us just think everything looks perfect. And so I want to caution you that if things look too good to be true, that you should trust that instinct. And also just expect that the road ahead for whatever you're initiating is going to require a couple revisions. Maybe you redo it. Maybe you change things. And that is ultimately for the good. Mercury retrograde always helps us to rebuild things in a way that is far more beneficial for us in the long term. So if you're open to that and you don't really have you know, necessarily a great choice ahead of you, then I would select the 19th after about 8.45 p.m. Central Time and before 2.15 a.m. Um, you're going to have to check to see when Virgo is rising in your area if you live in a different part of the world than me, and you can do that with a simple Google search. So um, one thing I also want to share is that this is a general election date for the public. And so there are other things to consider specifically how this energy aspects your unique natal chart. And I can help you with that. If you are interested, I offer one hour natal chart readings. And for existing clients, I do 30 minute readings where we can talk about things like specific dates. And so um, if you haven't had a natal chart reading with me yet, you can book it in the link down below. And then we can talk about spe specific dates for what you're trying to do and find the best energy for you and your goals and manifestations. Also, if you like this video, if you like these electional calendars, this is going to be a Patreon exclusive starting in the month of February for the rest of time. So you can join my Patreon. It's my Astro Tribe for Seven Moons, link down below. And every month I will be making an electional chart to help you plan by the moon. And uh, if you join my community, I can work with you specifically a little bit more on your unique natal chart to find just the right date for you. So check that out. If you're interested in joining me on there, I'm going to have a ton of exclusive content and astrology education if you're interested in learning and taking your skills to the next level. I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for watching with energy.